back loop kind of a thing. Okay, it's okay now, it's fixed. All right, guys, okay. thank you very much for joining. I'm Truthman from uh, Overclicking TV. But tonight I will be speaking of the Open Bench Table uh, project. The Open Bench Table is basically a joint venture between Overclocking TV, HWBot, and Streetcom who designed the best open air forward slash bench table on the market. Uh, so far, it's been more than a year and a half that uh, basically we were actually. Yeah, more than a year and a half that we uh, started this project along with Streetcom and uh, HWBot and Overclocking TV, of course. And uh, we already have on the market one of the products. So, um, what is on the market today called the uh, Open Bench Table BT1. Uh, this is the first revision. This is the uh, ATX size uh, platform that supports anything from many ATX up to. That ATX uh, motherboard. This is an open air uh, case, and if you well, if you saw some of the lights before, it basically fit in like a small thing. So it's basically a case, a PC computer case that you can use directly when you travel, or if you're a reviewer to store or to have somewhere, and you don't have to use like the big um, cases like these ones or this one. Uh, that were something that was uh, on the market before. And uh, basically what we did with this one was to engineer a piece of, um, out of a piece of aluminium, to get something that we can travel with and to make sure that we can use anywhere we go. Um, the main reason that we, we worked on that was bef uh, because we wanted to fix some of the challenges that overclockers and top overclockers had when they travel around, uh, to have a good looking system and something easy to use. Uh, but along the way, we wanted to help out all the reviewers and all the people that like open air case. Because most of the time, it is just a case that looks without any stuff of steel around. So we wanted to change that. So that was about, um, was it like September or October last year that we went on the market with this one. It is still available. You can get this one on openbenchtable.com. Same as here. You can get this one on openbenchtable.com. It's... Um, let me find the exact price because I don't want to say any uh, bad things. Uh, you can buy that online at openbenchtable.com or you can buy it on your uh, preferred e-tailers uh, if they have stock, of course. Uh, so the official server version is uh, 159 USD on the openbenchtable.com uh, site. Uh, 199 for the black version that looks super good. I have to admit, I, I wish I did not add the number one. Of the silver, so I could buy actually the uh, the black one, and there is a red one at one ninety nine as well. So one fifty nine for the silver version, one ninety nine and one ninety nine for uh, the black and red. Uh, shipping is included with uh, the black and red as well. So it's uh, it's it's uh, quite interesting. Um, we have a lot of partners that are actually selling the BC one itself. So it's called BC one on the market, while it's the open bench table. Uh, project for the for the complete uh, for complete system. Um, the complete system is actually open source. Yes, it is open source as well. So we wanted to, you guys to be able to build your own. Basically, um, it was more like uh, if you want to three D print it, sure do it. If you want to three D print extra accessories, sure go for it. There's all the uh, the plans available on the on the website openbenchtable.com. Um, if I if I go around everything that is available, so you can buy that on Open Benchable or some of the e-tailers. Um, as of now, there was questions uh, from the live chat on. Let me find back the page. I'm super see the live chat, uh, which is not here. I lost my connection. Yeah, that was a question from uh, when do you think that the stock? Oh, where was that? Uh, there was a question about the stock about the uh, the BC one, so the uh, the OBT Pro one. Uh, when that will be coming back? Um, it's already available on the OpenBenchTable.com. Silver is still available. There is still some red that you can buy as well. Black is sold out. Black was such a success that it sold out so fast. Um, so as of now, if you want to get the silver or the red one and go buy them on, on uh, openbenchtable.com. Um, 
And we ship worldwide as well, so you can ship it anywhere you want, wherever you live. And for the e-tailers, I have no... Or I don't know when they're going to get it, or if they received it and it's not yet in stock and stuff like that, because it depends a lot on each of the different e-tailers. So I know that some of the e-tailers already got some stock, but I don't know exactly how many, and I don't know exactly when they received it or put it uh, put it back in stock at their um, at the web shop. So basically, if you want one right now and you you want to support the uh, the project itself, you can always go on the openbenchable.com and buy one. So that's just one thing you could do. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, just keep them flowing in in the uh, in the live chat. That will be a uh, that will be uh, uh, not a problem to um, to explain and to talk about it. Um, I want to quickly talk about these. So the, these are basically 3D printed feet for the tables that you could use to hold the table in place when you have a complete system mounted on it. Um, this is a, a community addition for it. So these are, these are not official part of the bench table. These are just a way to solve or to let's say, tackle some of the challenge that uh, end users had. Uh, the main reason behind these ones were Linus on Linus Tech Tips. And um, they, they had a lot of, let's say, bad time with falling bench tables. Of course, not the open bench <laughs> table directly, but they almost make the open bench table fall. And we were like, come on, if they are starting to use the bench table this way, it's because it looks good. Um, so they they actually instead of using it like like this, they use it like this. So they can when they shoot the video, it's actually looking much better. So we were like like wait, people start using it this way because that's the way they want it to be used, or that's how they want to use it. So basically, what we did is like, can we make some like feet for it? So these are three printers. Um, they will look as good as you can print them. Uh, but basically, it's a uh, it's a nice addition if you are a YouTuber, a tech tuber, and you have uh, your systems. You can actually get the file on openbenchtable.com. You can 3D print that yourself. Uh, if you can't 3D print, you can always use uh, services for 3D printing. And if you don't know how that works, just send me an just send an a, a whisper on uh, on Twitch to Overclocking TV, and I will tell you how it works. Uh, basically, once you have and, that, you uh, basically and shoot videos. Yeah, Tullius? We have a, we have one more question. Uh, sure. Mikkelty is asking whether there's plans for different colors. Uh, so, Blue, as of, green. so as of now, the colors choice are silver, the original one, which in my opinion looks very good, black and red. Uh, the red one, as long as you see it in real, because it's always hard to, to add the real think... feedback, um, it looks very good as well, and the black one looks... Take it from me. Very sexy. All and of like, it. They're all goddamn sexy. Like, you, you saw it, right? You, you saw it. Like, the red one looks on point. Like, Stunning. honestly, it was... Stunning. Even for us, like, from, from the time we get the feedback from the factory, get the pictures and so on, it's like, okay, we need pictures, we need a way to not have the colors modified by the pictures to see how it looks like. And... Honestly, I saw uh, I saw the the first uh, red one uh, like in real life at Computex. I was like, oh my god, that red looks so good. Um, so yeah, no, there is no plan as of now to do any other colors. Uh, there is a few reasons for that. You need a certain amount of colors. Uh, you need a certain amount of units to do the colors. Uh, you need to get the color right. So as I was saying, for the red one, it's very difficult to get the exact good color you want. And if, if you think about that, doing purple, green, white, I don't know, like name, name it, like any colors you want. The thing is, it's not impossible to do. The thing is, it's not worth it to do. So the key is we don't want to have the market completely obliterated by the different colors that we could do right on the market. If, for example, we do green, and yeah, okay, honestly, NVIDIA, if you're watching and you want a thousand of green bench table, sure, I will do green version for you, no problem. I mean, come on, we'll be retarded to say no. But 
basically doing extra colors is way more costly, uh, way more expensive as well. Uh, there's a good reason why the price is not the same as well between the silver and the black and red. And if we do extra colors, I guess that could be even more expensive because the colors, the other colors will be like less uh, famous or less uh, have less interest from other people. So that's why we always need to keep in mind when we do these um, this kind of uh, choices on to do um, colors. So as of now, no, there is no idea or things to go for different colors. If there are any other questions, I can actually uh, move on to uh, get the system yeah. going. I don't think there are any other real questions. I mean, they're saying presumably they're done by anodizing the aluminum. So, I, I mean, yeah, that's how obviously you're going to get the color uh, absolutely right is it, it is anodizing. And, and it is a special, it's a, I mean, it's not that easy to do. I mean, people it, say, no, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, you can do that. It's, like, it's not that easy. You have to. It's not that easy. Yeah. yeah. You have to There's think a special about it process well. to get the color to look that good. I mean, just regular anodizing will not will not get you the results that you're after here. There's definitely a process here. And, and I mean, thanks to Stricom, I mean, they know exactly what they do, and we can yeah. control. We can. That's the thing. We are able to control what's going on from the factory itself, which gives us an impressive. Uh, yeah. Advantage and you've got Advantage flexibility for it. as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's something that not that many people can do, and that's something that most of the people don't want to do because there is a cost for it. And, and honestly, I mean, doing this and still being able to get on the market with something that is as high press priced as something that is made out of steel is a, no, it's quite. I mean, people. I, I heard a lot of. Uh, uh, concern of people like, how oh, do you think the price is too much? Like, honestly, the price is super low for for exactly the amount of time and spending it and the and the toolings and the special crews and all. It's 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 quite a decent it's, price. Like, honestly, it, when I see others doing steel, like other products on the market based of steel or plexiglass, I was like, why do you sell that for like twenty bucks cheaper or like thirty bucks I mean, cheaper? It's like wow. Yeah, I mean, all all you have to do is hold one of these in your hand, and you know where the money's gone, and the quality, and the machining, and you know there's not a single rough edge, and the way everything's been finished. So you can totally tell where the money's going. It's going into delivering a product that's actually <laughs> of really high quality. So this is not all in my pockets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to the. Um the system itself uh what i do have now and uh, is the uh, the bc1 mini uh so the obt mini prototype um so as you guys noticed there's different uh name for it the first one is the obt and the second one is bc1 you have to keep in mind these are the exact same product the only difference is obt is the project itself and bc1 is the commercial name for it so basically when you buy a BC one, you support the production, you support uh, things like that, like the, the overall selling of the, uh, of the product, while when you buy an OBT, you support the project directly for it. So if you're an overclockers, you should get the OBT from the website. If you're anyone else, you can get the BC one from any editors. All right, so if we have a look at uh, what we have here, um, this, these are prototypes. I know it does look good, but these are prototypes. And um, so this prototype is based for a Mani ITX uh, version of uh, motherboard. Um, we have the same concept, we have the handle, we have a very clean design, a uh, very smooth design as well, uh, something that looks very uh, polished and uh, not well thought through. Um, we have the feet of the table standing right in the table, uh, that's something you can travel with very easily. That's something you can actually um, mount and unmount without any tool. Uh, everything is toolless, and uh, basically we have the same push pin, we have the same kind of screws, and we have the same kind of uh, PCI Express uh, extender. Uh, talking about the spare part, like screws, push pins, uh, PCI Express uh, uh, risers, etc. Um, 
you can get these ones and I know that uh, Akir P had a question about that like if I build my own can I buy this uh, yes, you can buy the screw things. You can buy the screws. So basically the screws, the push pin, the standoff and the PCI Express bracket. Um, it's sold out as of now at the time I was doing this video, but it's, uh, will be, I guess it should be available on the, on the site, uh, in the next few weeks at best. Um, you will be able to buy these out for your own bench table. So for example, if you 3D print it or if you, uh, basically CNC that and basically if you are in school and have access to a CNC I encourage you to try to do the same thing and you will learn how hard it is honestly if you try to master doing the CNC for this with all the screws and threading on the side anodizing and all let us know it could be very interesting to have your feedback on you know, how hard it is actually <laughs> to, to, do, to do this um, so yeah, you could get the push pins. The main reason uh, why people ask is the thread, push pin, and screws are custom made. Uh, the reason is there was no screws on the market that could fit our requirements um, for this specific product. And I am someone that likes to have a framework and to have things that you can reuse. The main issue with this was that, yeah, we had to make them because, well, the screws are a special length. The, um, the thumb, the thumbing, like you can use your thumb only. It's not uh, too harsh. It's not too big. It's all fit nicely. So basically, like all that fits perfectly. I mean, the uh, the ratio and the positions are all optimized for like a proper, good-looking way of doing uh, doing the things. And um, so yeah, you could buy these ones on the on the side. They're about like uh, thirty-nine USD MSRP. Get like uh, the few push pins, the full standoff, a uh, bunch of screws, and the PCI Express riser for that. Um, when that's gonna be available back on the website, we will be sending an email to all the subscribers of the newsletter of the openbenchtable.com. So if you're not yet a ben uh, like a subscriber for this, you can go on openbenchtable.com and subscribe for for it. So that's uh, too much talking. So let's move on to these. Uh, OBT Mini, the BC1 Mini, Mini ITX. So uh, some guys asked me to compare against the the regular size one, which is this big. But I mean, it's in the the cover, so I would get it off. So this is actually my personal uh, my personal unit. Uh, it's the unit one out of two hundred. Now you won't be. Able that's the unit one out of uh, 200. And I think I lost one of the uh, end of the last time. All right. Yeah, I don't need any. That's... All right. So this is actually the original one. So that's the original uh, OBT. This is like uh, 1.86 kilos. It's uh, made out of aluminium. Stay at the same. It's like the it stay inside, you have the bracket for AIO cooling, uh, you have the brackets for uh, TI Express right here, you have the different screws for either the uh, PSUs or anything else that you want to on the board, on the, on the table as well. So this is the regular size and this is the mini size and if we compare the two, basically this is how they fit. So we can see that in terms of constraint, that was way constrained. So mini ITX for the, the the black one that we have right now, that would be, that should be available in red, black, and silver as well. This is not uh, completely defined yet. This is all based on your feedback. And mini ITX support, uh, you can plug bigger motherboard, but that doesn't make any sense uh, whatsoever. While this one support ATX size PSUs, these ones will support SFX PSUs. Uh, the main reason is we got a lot of feedback from the Mini ITX um, crew or clubs, depending on how you want to call them. And there is no point to run a Mini ITX setup with a full ATX uh, PSUs. Yes, it will work, but it's just not making any sense. Uh, the second thing is if we want to keep 
uh, size of the complete product at a certain level are actually not too big to accommodate the ATX. We wanted to focus on SFX. All right. So if we look at it right now, we have the Endel. So Mani ATX support. Endel, we have two PCI Express uh, brackets to hold on your graphic cards. Anyway, there's only one PCI Express lane on Mani ATX. So this is uh, more than enough for any of the big graphic cards on the market. We have one, two, three, four push pins for the, uh, for the, for the motherboards. We have one, two, three, four uh, standoff that you can use either for the motherboards or for the PCI Express uh, standoff. We have two brackets for AIO here, two brackets for AIO here, so that makes it four. So that means you can uh, plug in two AIO on Mini ITX, that's gonna be CPU and VG. So even on this size, even on this side of uh, the case, you will be able to plug AIO for the CPU and an AIO for the, for the, for the VG. Um, here we have, here and there, the two supports for uh, SSDs and hard drive. Uh, so we'll be able to plug two hard drive or two SSDs. Once again, we are on Mini ITX. It makes no point to have a big SSD on that. But if you're one of these guys to do it, you will be able to do it uh, maybe on the other side on the top. Anyway, there's always a way around that, and that's actually porting the system port. Um, here we have extra screws uh, for it. They are all threaded the same way, and I'm not sure you will be able to see that on the on the live. But these are all metric screws. Metric screws. Why? The main reason is the Mini ITX platform itself, the ecosystems rely on Mini ITX and SFX. The SFX PSUs, they use metric screws. They don't use the 632 six, uh, screws that are on the uh, ATX. So this is uh, basically what is going on from the top. This is big on what, uh, from, from, the, from the back. You can see that the PCI Express bracket actually and and hold in place the the legs for the uh, for the tables and I'm not sure you guys can see it but here and there on each side we have the new design for the rubber feet as well uh, to not have the feet moving on the table so basically when you hold that table on your main table will be moving but these will not be moving your platform is safe um, oh and one addition as well we have the Kessington lock so if you're on the trade show and you want to lock down the system for people to not grab it and run with it because it's so efficient, and you can actually use the casing gun uh, as well for it. All right, that's a lot of uh, talking. Do you see there any question on the live chat? Yeah, yeah. There's there's basically a couple. Um, one is, will there be any retailers in India? Um, hopefully soon. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, but uh, also, um, because he's asking how much... Okay, okay. Uh, much yeah, I, I, I can actually answer a little bit more about uh, Ethereum in India. Um, I would answer this way. Who would you suggest to be an Ethereum in India? Uh, if you have contacts or if you have an um, idea on where you want to buy it, uh, just send me a whisper or an email at uh, contact at openbenchtable.com and we will be able to maybe find out if they are interested to get some or, or anything. Otherwise, you can always get it from openbenchtable.com. True. Um, this is something that I would, that I've been thinking about doing myself. But yeah, that's a conversation for another point in time. But also, we've got Mikkeldi asking how long does each OBT take to make on a CNC? You mean to produce? Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly for each of them. Uh, the main reason is you have to understand that. When we do an OBT, we don't do one. <laughs> when we do OBTs, we basically, uh, there's no, okay, let's face it. There is no way that we can make it at this price if we just do one unit. There's no way. If you do one unit, it's extremely pricey. It's, it's a premium price to do it. Like this is why prototyping is extremely expensive when you do uh, CNC work and every time you use like strong piece of aluminiums or stuff like this. Um, so one unit, I like, exactly, I don't know, like 
I don't know if it's like five minutes or two days because you have to CNC it, you have to make sure it's um, there's no defect on it, then you have to um, test grade it for force and things. You don't test all of them, you just test some of them. And then you have to go to anodizing, but before that you have to uh, polish, then you can anodize, then you have to make sure that the anodizing is well, you need to rest the anodizing for some time, so you have the cleaning in between each of these steps. And, well, there's way That's more than that, because you just don't go and CNC it. Because the CNC yeah. will be from one angle, maybe two if you have a very expensive CNC, but basically it's one angle. So that means if you do all the holes that goes like this, that's one hole. And then you want to do the holes on the side because there's screws on the side. You need to do another, you just, you need to remove it, put it back and then go again. But then you have four sides, so you need to do that four times. Then you need to do the back as well. Then you need to clean them, you need to polish them, you need to anodize them, you need to make sure the anodizing is well, you need to rest them, then you need to do the treading, or the treading is before, depending on how you want to, uh, to do the productions. And this, you still haven't packed, you still haven't checked the quality in the end, you still haven't received the screws, you still haven't unscrewed anything, you still haven't screwed anything on it, and you don't haven't put the engraving yet on it. So, like, like saying like, how much time does it take for one table? This is not something I can, I can say because it's, it's way more than, it's, it's definitely few weeks for a a batch of of them to be made, but I can't say exactly how how long it is, just for all these different uh, things as well. I saw that was uh, regarding the question just before. Um, do you offer free shipping to India? Yes, from openvegetable.com on the black and red, it's free shipping everywhere. So it's basically one ninety nine shipping included. So if you live in a country, do you know that shipping costs a lot or anything? Just go by the black or the red. Well, actually, the black is sold out, so go by the red one. <laughs> <laughs> the red one's the sexiest, guys. Trust me, I've seen that puppy in real life. It is one sick-looking bench table. Okay, Julius, is there any other questions, or I can go back to building? Yeah, we can carry on with the build. Like All that. right. I have one of my cameras that is uh, a little bit too, uh, too bright, so I don't want to... Scare out the people for you know, <laughs> the the one. I don't know. I don't know what I changed as a setting just before the live, but okay, that will do anyway. All right, so let's go back to uh, building the BC one um, mini, so the OBT mining. Mini or mini, like call it whatever you want. All right, so this is how you get it. Um, oh, there was a question just before. Do we plan to get a sleeves like this for this one? Uh, the answer is it's not defined yet. I this is a live feedback thread. So thread, if you guys want the sleeves, let us know in the live chat. Uh, but I don't think that's gonna be. Uh, something that will be coming it uh, with it, unless you guys really want to uh, to to have it with it. Um, once again, this is the Mini ITX one, it's, uh, uh, targeting a very specific part of the market as well. Uh, but the main important is it's not just about the market; it's about people that will be using it, and people are either from the SFX uh, side, so the small form factor um, uh, kind of uh, communities, or Basically, any of work clickers that want to use my ITX. Um, hopefully, I hope there's going to be more and more my ITX setup. I do use my ITX a lot, uh, even for one of my uh, storage server. Uh, this is um, my ITX that I use, and I'm sh I should I should be able. To my son is here. Yeah, I should be able to give you an extra view uh, from the camera if I can. In a second, I would be. Uh, get it. Um, in the meantime, to use, uh, do you own one actually? Because I think you do own one, but I'm not sure. Me? Yeah, I do. You, you had the silver one, right? I have the silver one. Yeah. Do you, how do you do? You use it every day as well. It's. I can't live without it. I mean the. 
once you get once you get hooked on to how easy it is and how quick it is to actually put hardware on there and remove hardware it's yeah it's very tough to use anything else actually well, that, that's, that's, i think that's good to i think it's yeah i think i think honestly and just just the fact that i mean even when i carry it around uh, even when i go to like different um, shows and stuff here like where we do the overclocking demos for amd and asus and all of this stuff it's just the easiest thing for me to just take with me it, it, it packs up into nothing i just pick it up and i go and yeah it's honestly a really 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 helpful um helpful table i mean just the sheer convenience and the way it packs up into nothing is beautiful well that that's always good to have uh, uh, and as well oh yeah oh yeah i I'm, i'm actually planning to order two 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 more for my for the youtube channel i'm definitely going to get two more one one again because just like you said even linus uh, they just make a really good display it just makes a really good display thing you know you can you, you you can put your hardware up you can make it look really pretty and with the feet like you showed off you can put it in whatever angle or whatever orientation you need and you know get your shot done so yeah one of these is going to be permanently behind i mean it's going to be permanently on the channel because that that's what the system is going to the computer for the channel is going to run on so <laughs> yeah all right okay so let's move on let's uh, let's build the uh, obt mini prototype so keep in mind this is a prototype this is not the final version if you want to see anything on the final version this is the time for you to say it on the live chat uh, so uh, let's let's get to it and uh, and try to uh, to end on that. So first of all, we'll try to remove the feet from the table because that's basically the uh, the main stuff we want to have. Um, I did unmount this one maybe twice since I have it. So I basically unscrewed the uh, TI Express uh, stands, but as they are on the top and on the bottom, they won't move unless you actually unscrew the, uh, the different feet yeah. right here. Introduce if you have any question. Just uh, just go on. Um, what 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 I wanted to know was um, especially uh, especially with especially with this case, um, how how easy would it be to say you know mount say even a bigger radiator say something like a two forty or something like that because it looks like it's going to be really easy. On the uh, you mean on the mini one or on the regular one? on the on the on the mini one the regular one makes it makes it really easy to do i think there's no big issue in actually having bigger one it's just that it's going to be hooked by either the top or the bottom uh, on the final version we plan to have the side as well but it's basically right. like here and here you have two holes uh, yeah you can see that on the on the live you have two holes where you can actually hold the brackets in i True. do have I don't have the. Oh yeah, I do have the uh, Edge, uh, one hundred and ten i from Corsair. I can try to um, put on the on the system. Nice, because I mean, just from the point of view, like even like you get the two forty AIOs. I mean, the two forty custom loops today. You know, from EK and even from SwiftTech. So something like that on a mini IDX system, one GPU, one CPU, two forty. Custom AIO, custom water cooling AIO kind of deal, and yeah, you, you have a lovely little system. Great little HCPC gaming. But I mean, if you gaming. have many ITX and you use the two forty millimeters, that's a bit overkill as well. I mean, it looks yeah. good, but it's a bit overkill. True. I mean, just just basically, if you're going to put the CPU and the GPU on water, on water cooling is what I was thinking. So you can just use a two forty millimeter radiator, CPU, GPU on water. Lovely compact system, and it may it makes for a great great little package to take even like your uh, your uh, gaming competitions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, for gaming competition, that that would look good. I'm yeah. I haven't seen that that much, and most of the time we don't see the computers for the gaming competitions, sadly. But uh, that would be a, like a, a nice system as well. All right. So this is how it's uh, it is a mount. So this is the frame basically, and then we have the feet basically. Uh, this one here. Uh, will be like one of the feet as well. Uh, now that I have the right camera, I can actually sh show you that here, yeah, here is the new rubber feet from uh, for the beast on the for the OBT mini, mini. So that we will be able to 
this once it's on the table it won't move basically the table will move but the feet won't move on the table all right so when we, so have, we have a yep we have a question from zedius he he's 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 asking what is this what is this all about is it the support for cooling device no it's actually a bench table to mount your computer on. Um, it's basically a case just, without any covers. Yes, just simply put, you can put you, you can build your entire computer on on, on this thing. I'm not sure I have the right uh, right screws. So these are. So keep in mind, this is a prototype, though. Eh? So not plan to. Not sure I'm using the right screw. So these ones are okay. There's one thing I can tell you guys is when you look at this, this here was forcing us to do smaller screws for the prototype, but this will be a little bit bigger. Actually, the 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 holes you have here will be a little bit bigger to allow us to have exactly the same screws as we have here. Uh, I need to try the right screw. So once again, I mounted. I I used the. Uh, the uh, another one at Computex to take the pictures that you guys saw on the on the site. So yeah, get there. But when you will have it, these four screws that are fixing the will be the one used to actually fix it. Just that uh, for the prototype, these uh, screws were a little bit modified. But once again, what we want to have is to be a framework so anyone can. Um, and use it and if you need to order a spare part like uh but remember what was the name of the guy that i was uh, asking before you will be able to order parts uh, online as well either if you want extra parts for your official one that you bought or if you build your own because um once again the obt project is open source so we are open sourcing the schematics for the uh for the bench table basically we know that this is difficult to produce and well, you can try to produce it, but the only person that have the right to produce it for commercial purpose is us. So well, we basically give out to the makers and everyone that wants to, uh, so for example, you are a student into a classroom that uh, do uh, mechanical engineers and you, you can have access to CNC, go for it, like honestly, Go for it. Go try out to make this. If you manage to make this, that's actually a good display for of your skills on the for your professors or anything. So this is how it's mounted. Once again, like I will I will push and move, and what we move is actually my table, not the not the bench table itself. All right. What we can do after that is to unscrew standoff. Guys, it's this is a live uh, live feedback. So basically, if you have any questions regarding this or how we do things or uh, if we could change things around, because the the key part is to have the feedback from you guys, and just just let us know in the live chat. Hey, obscure paradox! I just bought my big one now. Which one. which color did you got? Did you got the silver one or the black one or the red one? You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Right, so this, these are the four push pins we want for the motherboards. Uh, the motherboard will just snap in, snap out. These are the exact same one we use on the, uh, the regular the regular open bench table. And if you don't like the push pins, you can use the uh, other standoff that you can actually screw in with the same screw that screw the feet and screw everything else. A great success! Ah. Thank you, Teriax Yeah, Kill. Thank you very much for following the uh, following the show. Uh, if it's your first time, well, welcome. And uh, what we're doing right now is to and get feedback from you guys about this uh, prototype of the BC1 Mini, so the Open Bench Table Mini Edition. This is for Mini ITX systems. Basically, this is a case. Well, without case around, but yeah. 
that's how we want to call it. So it's basically. All right. Or this one here. Actually, I don't have any mini ATX mainboard anymore. I do have a micro ATX that I can that I could use. So what we have here, so this here just slide off. Uh, these are the brackets. Uh, so these brackets allow you to fix uh, all-in-one water water cooling, regular water cooling, pretty much anything you want to to fix on your on your system that needs like extra fans, etc. Um, what we provide are or is actually the the system itself, and if you want to have more um, capabilities or anything, you can 3D print them if you want. You can 3D print your own uh, bracket, or you can actually request uh, from services online people to actually that for you. And if you print something, you can always go on the openbenchable.com uh, website uh, where you can actually submit your realization or your things that you did. Well, for others to do as well. So we have right here the AIO bracket for the CPU. We have the AIO bracket right here that we'll put in there for the VGA. I'm not sure I still have a VGA with an AIO though. Try to see. So, so far, as you can see, this is super easy to mount. And I still need no tools whatsoever. I had no tools being right now. All right. I guess, you know, you could actually mount two 240s. I mean, if you're okay with like really loading it up because I don't see a reason why it wouldn't actually fit. Like this is just me being silly, but I don't see a reason why it wouldn't fit. It would easily fit. All right, you know what? I want to try out how to... I do have, I don't know if you can see it, but I do have the V is an all-in-one cooler on. It will be fun to test. Ah, shit, I can. Okay, I won't be able to test the uh, all-in-one for the for the uh, for the VGA because I only have micro ATX motherboard. I don't have mini ATX one. I need to get my new one. I was supposed to get it in time, but no, didn't. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, sadly. So let's get around what we have to do. So this is the case um, built for the uh, OBT Mini. Uh, this is still a prototype. Keep in mind, this is still a prototype. Uh, but basically what we have is um, Mini ITX size motherboards. We have two bracket size for the PCI Express. Um, we have front and back to hold on the um, on the uh, SFX format PSUs. We have two holes here. Okay, we have two holes in the feet to actually allow the uh, PCI Express bracket to fit in. We have the special rubber feet at the bottom of the uh, of the table. If you're a, a tech tuber, you can use the you can use the BC one like this, which means you can take and a good picture of the platform. Um, once again, if you have the uh, official regular one, you can use this kind of 3D printed, hold it in place. And we have the fixation at the bottom and the top for the AIO. We plan to have the fixation on the sides as well. Uh, we have the Kensington lock right here in the middle. We have extra screws in case you need. There's, uh, there's going to be four screws for the feet and an extra eight screws or uh, anything you want to actually plug on it. Um, the main reason behind that is all the screws will be the same. For now, these ones are a little bit different because of the prototype, but all the screws will be the same on the retail one. Um, a great success! Yeah! Thank you, Bazina Face, for the follow. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is the black version. Uh, Maybe actually I could look 
uh, building the silver one. If you guys want to, uh, then. Oh, by the way, that's one thing as well that we worked on is you can screw the screw in the screw. That is like priceless. Boom! Screw tower. Take that. But there's no usage for that. It's just because I don't want to store them and I cannot store them in the All right. So this was the black one. Uh, what we can do is to maybe try to build the other one. But guys, if you have any feedback, that's the moment. Give me feedback on how do you like it? What would you want to build on it? What do you want to try out on this, uh, on this system? How do you think... Do you think you're going to... No. Are you planning on getting one if that's going on the market? Because that's going to go on the market for sure. <coughs> uh, actually, Tullius, you asked me if I could put uh, two forty millimeters on this one, right? Right. Okay, let me try. I'm not sure that's going to work because I don't have the, the right screws right now, but I could try. And because honestly, by by just looking at it, I think it'll it'll work. I mean, it'll work really well. It should well. work. Yeah, yeah, it should work. It's yeah. Like right screws. I don't have the right screws, but um, I would just use the screws from the uh, the rigor. Because that's the thing as well. So there's these two format of screws on the on the PC systems. Uh, ATX PSUs and a all-in-one coolers, water cooling, or they use uh, US standard screws while everyone else is using metric. And as a European, even though I live in North America, as a European, I hate, I really hate the, uh, the non-metric one. I'm a metric guy, I mean, we, ha we have a format, it's made to be used, so yeah, I... Uh, yeah. Metric works. That pretty much the whole world uses metric. Yeah. So let's plan to do something completely crazy with this. Is put this all-in-one cooler on the mini ATX setup, or fake that it should be on the mini ATX setup, and use it. Okay. But it. So then we'd actually need. Right. 120. So, put that on the side. What I will do is to first fix that already known cooler to the brackets. Like, what I'm using as a screw is not the screw from the table, it's just from the, uh, from the, from the BC one. But like these, you should be able to use from uh, from the one that are that are coming with uh, with the cooler itself. Right. So now that I do have things like this that are put in place correctly, I can just guys. I hope you get it. first screw in. Let's, let's do it like this. You guys will be able to. Oh, better here. Yeah. You guys will be able to what I mean. What I will do is I will put bracket first on the on the cooters, then I will use iron it here. Then. Right. Same for the other one. That will tape it. So yeah, curious. I can mount a two <laughs> a two forty millimeters AIO on the mini ITX. Easy peasy. That's just that's that's job done. I mean, you don't need more power on a mini ITX system. Yeah, obviously, obviously, you need a PSU underneath to uh, to have the counterbalance for it. Yes, uh, obviously, obviously, but uh, but like I mean, just just the <coughs> fact that you can squeeze a two forty on here, and there's room for another radiator. 
you can build yourself a proper custom water cooled monster mini ITX system on this platform. No problem. Easy peasy. <laughs> All right, so I will unmount that because there's no use for that anyway. I don't have the motherboard right now. And that PSU, actually, my SFX PSU is my server. So. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the Mini ITX, I was supposed to get a new one, but I didn't get it in time for, for the live tonight. And I... So yeah, I, I used the Mini ITX setup to, for my NAS, my storage system. Ah, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's precise. That's one of the biggest reasons why even uh, I built the, 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 these Mini ITX systems over here is because people like to use them for storage purposes. You know, it makes a... Tiny, compact, little mass build kind of a thing. Yeah, Mikkel Key says, yeah, the board is trying to, to fall over. Fall over. Yeah, it's because yep. there's, there's... It's got a heavy cooler on that. Because honestly, like, the, the, the bench table itself is super stable. It's just that if you, on purpose, make it over-dimensioned, you know, uh, like, yeah, I mean, not stable. It's like it's the same if you do that with the case, actually. It's like a seesaw. I mean, one side's a lot heavier than the other. It's 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 definitely trying to tip over, especially because the weight's higher up from the radiator, so it's definitely pulling it over even more. But the minute yeah. you have a power supply in there, or and you know a graphic card and a motherboard and stuff like that, there's no chance it's like, going to tip over. Like honestly, because... once you have the PSU, nothing moves. Yeah, it's done. It's done. And I guess that uh, some people will be able to come with uh, extra feet that fit. The small screws in the bottom of the feet as well? True, I mean, the beauty <laughs> about this being open source and the fact that, you know, you've got the plans out and they're available, you can build literally anything you want for this case. You're only limited by your imagination and the capability to make that part, but you could do anything. You could literally do anything. You could make brackets that, you know, go, that turn your case into literally your, you, you could attach like, like, like honestly, 60 millimeter radiators or whatever you want like the world is your oyster here like honestly i i do think that ah oh, i could actually mount an extra oversized motherboard to it for the fun um honestly this could be a very nice base for motors yes yes very true very very true and and because because just the fact that it's open source and the designs are available and, you, you know, like, you can just get stuff printed from 3D, from, from 3D companies like, like you were mentioning. And it just lends itself to being played with and toyed with, this case. It just lends itself very easily to that purpose. All right. So, sorry guys, I don't have a Mini ITXP uh, motherboard. I didn't. I did in time. So what I will use for demoing that it is actually still stable is to put a micro ATX motherboard on it. Uh, this is the uh, Maximus uh, 7 Gene, sorry. Um, this is bigger than what it is supposed to be intended for, but that will still uh, do the work. Uh, we use the four push pin uh, on it, so that means that we can just slide in the motherboard and just slide it out if we uh, if we need to. And I would just have an extra VG as well. So I use the four pins, clack, clack, clack. And if you're, oh no, the are not the right one. Yeah, so the push pins are not the final ones uh, in this version, but yeah, that's uh, that should be like just snapping in. I love the push pins. <laughs> like honestly, you can't even see the, the table underneath. <laughs> Well, you can see that it's going off, but this is not the side of motherboard that is supposed to go with it anyway. But it's just a matter of, yes, if you want to do it, you can do it. That's not a, right. that's not a problem. I should get back the, I still have the uh, X79 UD7 that is like XL ATX. But it's way Oh yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, we have another question from uh, Mikulti. He's asking us: Is it weird for you know to ask it for? Oh, I mean, to have an idea to basically cover the system with a acrylic case. Uh, you can with do acrylic it. Cover. Yeah, I mean, this is you can very easily make one yourself. That that's again 
something that the community can do because it being open source. You can even build something that like screws on to one of the posts on the side and holds up like an acrylic cover. I mean, you can design something truly, truly one-off that, you know, suits your purpose and you can just go ahead and build it. The, like, the honest, data's out there for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, honestly, there's no plan to release an acrylic case around that because that's not the, the goal for it. And to be honest, doing a very good-looking acrylic case around it will require some... That's, that would be so high-priced that no one will ever be able to actually afford it. But you can do it. I mean, if you want to do a case out of this, I encourage you to just do it. Like, honestly, if you can, just... Buy it. Um, Jay Chicken is asking, uh, how much does this cost? Uh, the BC, the OBT mining, there is no official cost for it, but that should be retail about 120 bucks, uh, give or take 20%, depending on how we end up on the uh, manufacturing. But we we want to get that on the market, so we presented the prototype. We know that we're gonna go on the market with it. We just don't know exactly uh, when. That should be the next few months anyway, and uh, that should be around 120 USD as a price point. But once again, don't quote me on that. This is not the official final pricing uh, as of now. This is the pricing that was uh, rumored, rumored about around the uh, the, around the Computex time. And um, uh, Afrom1 is also asking, can you mount 360 and 420 millimeter ads? Yeah, you can. I did the, the, like uh, like uh, Truff just just actually did. He put the Corsair H110 on it. Absolutely no problem. So I don't you know, can the, put it. The H110 is at 240 or 360. No, 240. that's 240. Yeah. That's 240. So I mean, but 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 then it's just getting longer. It'll have no problems. I mean, you if you can if, if you can mount a 240 that easily, you can mount a 360 on there as well. Like, I don't see a reason like why in not. Term, in term of fixing it, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's just about the weight. It's just about the weight and and stuff like that. But again, it's that those are those are things that you know you can you can totally work around. Um, but yeah, putting a radiator like that over there is no issue really. Well, this one is from Mania Check, so mounting a 420 on this is completely <laughs> not required. I would say, uh, even though on the uh, on the final revision. We will because we have holes on the top and bottom. On the final revision, we will exp we will be looking to get holes on the side as well, which will give you much more room to put like a big uh, radiators for it. Uh, while actually on the uh, let me get this one back. Uh, while on the uh, BC one, the the OBT one, like the the first revision that is already on the market, we do have holes right here on the side. That accommodates uh, 120 and and more than that. So basically, the bracket can actually move uh, on each side to accommodate the different size of either fans or uh, the different size of coolers. And on the top and bottom, we do have actually four holes uh, on it. So as you can see, you can have just here or here or here or the four as well. So basically, yes, you can mount you can mount them. You just need to um, understand where you want to put them but basically uh, four screws on the top you can have four screws on the bottom on each side and uh, that's where you can actually mount you can mount that on top you can mount that underneath for the regular one uh, on the on the mini the one that we are actually focusing on today on the bc1 mini that's going to be of course you can do it you i mean technically you can fix it it's just that you don't want to have a small and constrained mini ITX system and have a, a 420 millimeters AIO water cooling hooked up to it. But anyway, like the BC1 uh, mini, we like the OBT mini, we basically made it that if you want to you overclock with it, to have like a LN2 pod on it and so on, you can do it. That's gonna work. That's gonna be uh, sturdy enough to support it. Oh yeah, this thing is strong. I mean, you can put a you can I the, the you can I I could probably stand on this thing without having any worry whatsoever. Like this thing will hold up a ton of weight. 
And once again, it's uh, all toolless as well. We don't want to use any uh, tools for it. So... No, no, use me. <laughs> Tool use, yeah. <laughs> um, if you uh, actually, you guys on the Twitch live chat or on Facebook comments, uh, let us know if you want to have extra screws because we have extra screws for the metrics. So for motherboard, push pins, uh, uh, standoff, PSUs, all these we have extra standoff. But do you want extra screws for the extra stuff you want to plug in it? Uh, the main reason is that it's not directly the, 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 the main thing is that depending on what you want to hook up with it, it will be different side of screws, different um, um, not metrics, but different uh, kind of size for the screws. So it might actually be a, a little bit different from uh, from from time to time and what from what people expect. Usually, when you buy an AIO, you do have the screws that goes with it that should be able to actually hook up, and uh, with the the brackets of the of the mining. Okay, get this back to you. Like with this bracket, you should actually be able to actually put the small side in between uh, the radiator and uh, the pan on the uh, on the AIO cooling. That you don't even need to screws at all. J Chicken K says no make it as cheap as possible cheap as leave possible. the screws. Leave the screws. Well, it's okay. <laughs> it, it's funny to speak <laughs> about as as cheap as possible. Um, we are already going as cheap as we can on making this this sustainable. Like when I say sustainable, it's like being able to develop new kind of uh, format like this one out of the first one. And uh, the thing is, the screws are expensive indeed because they are custom made. Uh, but it's not. It's never gonna be super cheap because it's a big piece of aluminium anyway. <laughs> so it's not like this is a. Uh, this is gonna be super cheap anytime, and uh, it's a lot of. And it's a thick piece of aluminium. Yeah, it's yeah not I mean, thin. it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite big, and it's this is super. Actually, this is like super robust as well. Uh, that you can actually we use the same feed for everything like storing screwing things to it uh, holding things on and and like even like pressing like this I don't recommend you to do that but I mean the kind of aluminium we use is like I can't remember the exact grade for it but it's like a quite a high one um, and yeah so well I don't think that the extra screws would make it a lot more expensive it will be more expensive it's just a matter of where do we put them on the uh, on the system if we want to have it because this form factor does not need or require any non-metric screws out of the form factor anything you can plug to it can require any different kind of screws but that's something you that can you know anyone have different usage for it um, one thing for the feet as well uh, uh, like this you can see there's like three holes here uh, on the on the on the brackets, uh, this will be able to accommodate SFX form factor of PSU, and this will as well. Uh, so the 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 schematics are available online, so you can actually mount anything you want to it. If you have extra uh, different uh, PSUs, Pico PSUs, and all that, you can actually try to make an adapters or hook that to that are available right now. We have another question. Yep. Um, uh, Willy VT is asking, can we purchase the accessory kit for the OBT? Are they available on the website? So the accessory kit is called the screw pack. Uh, the screw pack contains uh, so the push pins, stuff like this, the standoff like this, so without the same. So this is the push pin. This is the standoff. Uh, a set of screws, uh, metric, a set of screws, uh, US size, and the PCI Express uh, bracket. Uh, like standoff for it. So as of now, it is out of stock, and we are working towards making it available in the next few weeks. Uh, I do hope that to uh, to be able in the next uh, in the next few weeks, because uh, um, I I do think this is something that is ideal for the uh, for everyone that build is on 
uh, table or want to expand on the table beyond what we actually thought about. And we have another question. Um, Jay Chicken is asking, has anyone tried to fly with it in hand luggage? Well, yes, I yes, have, yes, we and did. And I have never had a problem. Uh, I, I do, and actually I do travel every time I go to... So basically when we did the uh, like the, the, the big one, like the, the BC one like this, uh, we did that with traveling in mind because uh, we were organizing the, and we are still organizing the HWBOT World Tour and the Overclocking World Championship, which are all over the world and that we need to travel with it. And basically, Timote, myself, and I don't think people, but Timothy and myself, we did travel to a lot of different countries with that in our backpack. And we had no issue whatsoever with the security at, uh, at the airport. Uh, this is not a guarantee that it will work. This is just saying that by our experience, we did not have any issue traveling on different airports with the, the BC-1, uh, the OBT in our uh, luggage. Actually in backpack, like end luggage. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, your, your your mileage will vary based on country. You, you never know, you know, you come up, you come across a really angry, stupid <laughs> customs guy or like security guy, and they'll be like, no. But generally, I don't think you should have a problem, uh, even in a hardcore country like mine in, in India, where like they ask questions about everything, they let this slide. So, like, I like, I will be honest. I fly. Uh, I, like, I can tell you the the country I fly to with this in my in my backpack. I flew to uh, to Taiwan multiple times with it, uh, even that was the prototype or this one. I flew to Taiwan with it, no problem whatsoever. And I live in Canada, so that means I pass the security check in Canada and in Hong Kong, no problem whatsoever. I flew to Japan on the way back with it, no problem. I flew to Indonesia with it, no problem. I fly to the US for the uh, Overclocking World Championship this year in Vegas, no problem. I flew back to Europe in France, in and out, no problem as well. So once again, this is not a, uh, I'm gonna say a guarantee that it will always work, but it does work and we were actually very careful to not have any part, uh, to, have, to not have any part of the design that is uh, suspected to be close from something oh. that should be prohibited on a flight. Right. It doesn't really look like a weapon. Nothing here can be used to like really injure people or, you know, uh, well, hijack a flight, for example. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, even in a country like India, where they're really, really anal here, they're really, really like pedantic to the point where, you know, they ask you questions about, Freaking everything, including cameras and headphones and battery packs and whatever they don't understand, they're like, "What is this?" and no, well, but they somehow let this slide. <laughs> but that's the thing. Uh, I got asked uh, the first two times I, f I flew with it, like the because I flew with it in my backpack, and so keep in mind that when I travel, I travel with like two or three cameras. Uh, these usually are graphic cards in my backpack as well, so. Well, this is something when you pass in your end luggage that uh, they usually ask you a few questions like, and usually what was like, okay, the camera, they know it's like, they get this out, like, what's this? Oh, that's a computer yeah. case. Like, what? Yeah, it's a computer case. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, whatever, go on. <laughs> but once again, it's not because we always manage to pass with it that you will be able to pass with it as well. True, your mileage will vary. Is the he uh, so J Chicken is, has another question. Um, he he's asking, um, is the BC one the current version or is there a version two? Okay, no, this is the current version. So BC one is actually the name, the commercial name for the uh, for this one. So the the BC one is the commercial name for this one. That is the first open bench table that went uh, to the market. And a great success. Thank you very much, Torquistic, for the follow. And um, so the BC1 is the commercial name on the market. It's called OBT or BC1. It's exactly the same one. The difference is when you buy the OBT, you buy it from the website, uh, openbenchtable.com. While you buy the BC1, you buy it on the retail market. 
the difference is the amount of of uh, uh, shares that go back to the project is actually higher if you buy it on the on the OBT website. But that's the only difference that exists. Um, so the main one is called the BC one. The small one like this here is called the BC one mining. So either in black or uh, silver, it's just called the BC one mining because it's for mining ITX. Um, and they are all revision one. Uh, as of now, we uh, don't plan to do any more revisions. We want to go on the market with the the um, the, the BC one mining. And if you guys have great any... success, yeah, chicken case. Thanks for the follow. If you have so that's the BC one. That's the BC one mining. Uh, the BC one is available right now on the market at openbenchable.com and different retailers in silver, black, and red that I don't have here to show you guys. And the BC one mining is this is still a prototype, but that very much look like uh, with a few adjustments that you guys can give uh, will look like something that could go on the market in the next few months. Um, they're called the BC1 Mining or the OBT Mining, so the Open Benchable Mining. But that's the, the difference in between the uh, the, 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 the two uh, version and, uh, and and skews for it. So BC1 Mining, it's, it will be available on the market in the next few months. Uh, the colors as of now should be similar to the one we have, so silver, black and red. Uh, this will be depending on your feedback as well because your feedback is important here. And uh, basically, yeah, that's uh, that's it. The same. Uh, what we kept is same screws. So the metric screws is the same. Are the same. The push pins are the same. The standoffs are the same. The screws for the bracket are the same. The brackets are different though, but they supposed to be working the same because the uh, the size of the bracket space is the same. On the uh, on the bigger size, which is the size you will be using on your uh, AIO. So basically, it's it's a framework by itself. Oh, and the PCI uh, Express standoff as well is the thing. So basically, that will be a way for making sure that the system is uh, reliable. And this is a framework basically, more a fr more of a, of a framework than actually a just separated product. I mean, we saw a lot of different products from different manufacturers in the past years, um, but what we have to keep in mind is that there's no point. When we, when we basically sell an open bench table, we don't plan to sell a new one in the next five years or so, because I guess in five years, that's gonna still be as robust and as good looking as it is right now. So we don't really, we don't really fear that. And we are quite okay with it because the main reason we did it was to uh, to tackle some of the issues uh, and challenges that were existing on the on the on the market. Right, and also um, because of the fact that it's already been put through several revisions internally. You know, I mean, I've seen the bench table like develop from the version I have, which was like the absolute, you know, the prototype that you guys had into something that is truly, truly spectacular. Like, and and I've and I've and I've seen the community add and request features, and most of those have already been been incorporated. So it's already pretty much, you know, it's got everything that the community asked for and that was deliverable on this table. So there's not really much room for improvement. I mean, I'm sure if you think about it and you put some serious thought into it, of course, you can make anything better, but it's pretty much perfect already as it, as it were right now. Uh, well, if you have suggestion, I uh, would actually love to uh, put that in the project because this is, a, as you say, an open source project, and it's a, uh, I don't say crowd funded because it's not crowd funded, but it's a uh, crowd developed in a way. I mean, the the feedback is from the crowd as well, and this is very important. I mean, I guess that if most of the case manufacturers will actually do the same, like spend that much time into getting the uh, the feedback from the from the end users and from specific end users that they target the product with. Oh yeah. They will get Tell a very good it. market. The thing is you I won't mean be I, able... I asked this question myself that do case do case companies actually like give the system to like maybe give the case to like maybe 15, 20 proper builders and ask for their reviews because at times you look at cases and you look at the way they've been designed and you're like, dude, this is just it's stupid. Who thought of this? And if you put this through like a proper consumer panel or like you've given it to 20, 30 good enthusiasts or good system builders, 
the chances are you won't have those issues. And that's what you guys have done with this table. And I've okay. seen it. There's one thing as well that the, the case market is very different from actually what we're doing because this is not yeah. the case. This is, this is not fitting in any case category. We, we exactly. call it an open air system. We don't even need and call it an open air case. It doesn't look like a case. It doesn't have the requirement as they have on a case. It's, it's really like something like it's an alien on the market. It's, it's, it's usually right. on the case segment for the e-tailers because they don't have bench tables. But... <laughs> I mean, even on the bench table market, they all the bench table. I mean, most of the most famous bench table on the market, they more look like a case that got stripped rather than the bench table yeah. from the ground yeah. up. So, yeah. and that was like the Precisely. the big thinking we had behind, like how can we make sure it is uh, transportable, uh, that when we ship it, we can ship it fast, not too big, right. and make sure that it's actually like completely feature like feature proof and future proof exactly. and feature proof as well. And how can we mount that without any tools, which is none of the bench table I've seen on the market so far. And trust me, I have built different bench table before and I've, I do own a lot of bench table. Actually, I do own some of the uh, old bench table as well from uh, the different um, manufacturers. They were yeah, great. Yeah, they I were mean, great I'm at the time. Like, fine. honestly, that, that was a great time. But it's been years that Timote yes. and yeah, myself yeah. were thinking exactly. about like doing something else. Exactly. I mean, because even I've got a whole bunch of older bench tables and stuff like that. But the way this thing handles and the way it makes your life convenient to just carry around your hardware and stuff like that, it's beautiful. I mean, just even think about system testers and like stuff like where, okay, you need to take a system somewhere to like check or you need to take hardware to another location to check. It just makes it so easy to carry. So easy. You, could, you, you couldn't do this before until this thing came around. So... It's just beautiful. It, it is, and just the design. I mean, the fact that you know you've already it's you've given it the capability to do so much and yet be portable is truly spectacular. Because sure, you can sacrifice portability and add more functionality, and sure, you can do the other way around. But the balance is where this thing you know really, really, really stands its ground. It can do so much and still be portable. It's just beautiful. Yeah, Dimas, like or like even Oscar says, I've got. I've got two Dimas ones, and they weigh a ton. And moving them. Well, I do. I is... do own one. I do own one as well. Like I, yeah. I, I haven't used it for the past two years because I work on this exactly. project. But because, I do because... use one. I, I used one for years, and the main issue was the space you take. I used the. I used to have the Cooler Master as well. The, the push feet yeah. were breaking because they were based on on plastic. So these actually these tables were great at the time they went on the market. These product were on the market like years ago, like eight to nine years ago. Oh. That was great oh. at the time. It's just that as of now, we, we just basically reworked everything. And I'm part of the project, so of course I'm a little bit biased from that. But I always say to, to all the people, like the, the, for example, the Cooler Master one, like 10 years ago, I was actually going earth and sea to get one because I wanted to have one. And I, I really yeah. worked hard to get one. And I was like, yeah, it's awesome. I use it for many years. But nowadays, I don't see the point of using it anymore because, well, I'm part of another project. But as well, I saw this, most of the issue I have with it. All. Yeah, this does it all. And most of those cases, even like the DMAS and stuff like that, like you can't really put a power supply underneath it and fix it and stuff like that unless you've got the really big one, which is what I mean, the XL or whatever the hell they call, which would hold radiators and stuff. But that was an elephant compared to this thing. You know, like that was massive, and even the just the just just the single bench table. The way you can keep your PSU in here, you can keep everything bolted on, and you can still pick it up and you can walk. You can't do that with any other bench table. Can't be done. Uh, that was a question from uh, J Chicken K. Uh, <laughs> on the Mini ITX one, can you fit a Micro ATX version, yeah. and you can add the support for a second graphic cards in case it is in the second PCI Express slot? Uh, that makes no, like, I don't want to be rude, but that doesn't make sense that much to do it on the Mini ITX version uh, because of the SFX requirement and all that. But it's already supported on the regular one. So if you have, yeah. even if you have many, Mini ITX, you can use the big one. This is actually the, the funny things about that, uh, that thing is there is no limitation compared to any of the other, most of the other uh, cases. There's no limitation in terms of Motherboard size, motherboard form factor, 
graphic card form factor or graphic card size as long as they have the, the support for the PCI Express, uh, like the bracket, basically. And the motherboard, they can be Excel ATX. People say, oh, it doesn't support Excel ATX. Oh, well, it does. It's just a little bit bigger than the table, but it does. I mean, it's the same old, so... Okay. Plug in, plug out, it's the same. It's just like the last two uh, support for the motherboard don't exist, per se, but there's no point in actually having them because there's nothing there except an extra PC part. And once someone asked me, does it support the SR2 from EVGA? Well, that board being out in 2010, unless EVGA make a new one, maybe we can think of it. <laughs> True. I mean, it's not like dual socket overclocking is coming back anytime soon. Thanks, Intel. <laughs> well, uh, that's not going to be coming on AMD as well. So As well, yeah. So thank you, both of you guys. But yeah, it's... it's, it's it... Unless there's a need for a for a two P bed setup, I don't see the reason why. In fact, right now, considering the way things are going, maybe you could do a a, a mining a mining one where you can have you can like maybe you six, can already do it. The seven, only thing is, just, yeah, yeah, you just need to have the you can three D print the bracket that actually hook on the uh, like on the uh, on the sides here and yeah. on the on the top yeah. here, so you can do an extra rack for it. You could do that. It's just that yeah, people that, that mind, they, they don't care about aesthetics, so... Exactly. But you could do it, like, honestly, I should. Maybe I should do it. Just, like, an extra frame just to say, like, buy the OBT. And you can do mining with it. Mining. Yeah, why not? I mean, everything to do with mining is selling out right now. <laughs> yeah, but once again, I mean, if you're mining, do and you want will, to spend... It do the job. It will do the damn job beautifully. Yeah, sure, but do you like those people? Do they want to spend the hundred and fifty nine bucks extra on the, on the yeah. table or yeah. on the graphic cards? They will spend that on the graphic card. Uh, on the graphic cards, true. But I mean, for 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 just people, I mean, it makes deployment really really easy. It cleans it up. Like if for somebody, look, if I if I can just put more of these on wooden tables and stack wooden tables versus having to build like entire racks full of aluminum like or you know like stuff like that when i'm building frames out of metal and doing all of that stuff it's still a it's cleaner it's more compact um I, the psu stays underneath the system it gives you more space i mean you've got density versus having motherboard and the psu lying on the side and then you yeah i mean sure for for proper miners or miners have already made a good amount of money from their operation i i I'd, I'd look into it. I mean, I'd seriously look into it. But that's me. Because I like to have, even if I'm mining, I'd like to have it look and feel Yeah, because nice. you want to have it look cool anyway. And you're, and yeah, you're like yeah. a, you're passionate about that. You're not a miner as uh, someone mining just for the cash, so. Just for the cash, yeah, true. All right. Yeah, all... Yay, although, yeah, you were saying? Although, just, just, just the fact that it can be done, you know, with like say the addition of like a bracket, it's definitely it's 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 definitely another feather in the bench table's cap. Like just the modularity, like you were saying, you can build anything around this case, around this table, do anything. It's it's possible and it's easy because the specs are out there. This is something that even I could sit down and do, given enough time and stuff like that. I could build one of those things just because I because the measurements and the specs are out. Even if I didn't have a table. I'm actually trying to uh, to mount the. Uh, so these are. Okay, so what I'm trying to do now is to because there was someone asking for um, standing up the uh, the the motherboard. Um, these are the feet that are 3D printed. I need to uh, actually clean them a little bit. These are 3D printed feet. The schematics are available on the site, and uh, basically what. What is going on is I will try to, to mount it. I haven't tried yet. Uh, I, I got them printed when I was in Taiwan. I just didn't have the time to, to mount them yet on the table. But that should solve some of the issue for any tech tubers. So Linus is already doing it. Uh, not sure if uh, Jace 2 Sand and all the guys will be doing it soon. I know that the guys at Hardware Canucks uh, got uh, their, their board as well. So maybe they will be doing it in the near future to... Do proper um, shot. And the, so uh, will I. <laughs> I 
soon as mine come. So will I. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tudius, I know you will do that. That's gonna be a big thing for 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 you. That to is, do. It's just it's just beautiful. It makes my life easy. So easy. But I should need to actually put like a like to extend the all on the uh, 3D printed thing just because I didn't add the time to, to clean it well but basically it will fit there how does it work it's like holding like this well there's supposed to be a second one right here that looks so good for anyone doing like uh, YouTube videos like honestly I guess I should actually uh that does look stunning. Can you hear the noise? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually cleaning the uh the pre printed stuff that because that was like a very cheap 3D printing. Alright, so put the bit right here. And as I don't want to use an extra screws, I will use something else to screw the screw in. But you can screw the screw in the screw, so I will screw something in the screw to screw the screw. <laughs> <laughs> um, Willy, Willy BD is asking, oh man, that's great. Will those be available on the website? Which one? The, I think he's talking about the feet. The feet bracket, the design is available on the website in the uh, community project side. And you can download it and print it yourself if you want. Uh, that's not supposed to be something we would be selling because, well, you can 3D print that yourself. And uh, if you really want some, you can use 3D printing services that are available in different cities to uh, to, to make it happen. So, uh, basically... That looks cool. That does look cool. Um, Talking about the, the feet itself, if you want to see how does that look, let me know if I can... Oh no, I need to share my screen. Um... That does look sweet. <laughs> so when do you print yours? <laughs> I'm gonna get on it today. In fact, a very close friend of mine has a 3D printing company here in Bombay, so I'm just gonna send her the details right now after this is over and say please please get to work <laughs> please please give me that yes <laughs> very nice very nice quality no, oh, very nice, nice. <laughs> very very nice all right um i can't remember who was asking that was uh j chicken k and we vt and obscure products guys um, I'll just give you a tour about the, uh, the website itself. So if you go to openbenchtable.com, you will be able to see the awesome video that I always love to watch. Um, that, uh, that is there and uh, you can have all the different um, options and settings from the product itself. And my internet connection is going down as usual. Yeah. Thank you, my internet connection. So we have like all the details for the portability and the different kind of screws that happen, the legs, uh, the brackets to fix the AIO. Um, the AIO, you can fix it through the uh, screw that is provided with your AIO or directly to the radiator. I would recommend to use the radiator directly with an extra different screws. Uh, this is just because the the pressure of the weight will be more uh, better distributed on the uh, on the things. It can be on top, it can be it can be underneath. It depends on how you want to use it. The uh, motherboard stands off the push pins ones that are uh, custom made as well <coughs> that support any size uh, of um, of motherboard. Uh, the PCI Express standoff custom made as well. Um, so you use the regular standoff when you screw the PCI uh, Express one in. And the power supply uh, fit in there. So it's ADX power supply for the uh, regular BC1 and SFX for the mini one. 
Uh, SSD and HDD are of course underneath the table. Same on the uh, on the Mini one. The rubber feet are a different one on the Mini, but these ones are integrated in uh, into the uh, the ones. The travel sleeves is for the uh, open bench table version that you buy on the website. You're guaranteed to get the sleeves, uh, which is something you cannot get from the different shop. Um, that was questions on where you can buy it. So you can buy that online directly. It's a uh, 159 US for the silver version, and uh, it's a 199 for the black and 199 for the red one with shipping included. Uh, there is no more black. It's uh, out of stock right now. And uh, well, we still have silvers and we still have some some red, not that much, but we still have some. Uh, the black one was. Uh, a major overwhelm things on them on the market so that's uh that that was it um the spare part packs that used to exist was a uh, different kind of screws so the uh, metric one and the non-metric one uh, the regular standoff and the push pins and the pci express bracket they used to have extra bracket with it that's not gonna happen for the next few uh for the next few ones um so these are all the shops you can actually find the uh the uh, the obt at they might not all have stock it will depends a lot on how they uh, actually did the order and if you want to get t-shirt or uh swag or your teacup or anything you can just go on the uh, uh openbenchtable.com and click on mer merchandise and that's where you can uh, you can get it uh, there was other question as well on where can I find the 3D printed feet, the one that are actually standing on the regular bench table right now. Um, you cannot buy them directly, but you can actually print them from the community site, and that's where you will be able to find. There is the adapter for ATX to SFX for the regular version. There is how to print your own 3D bracket if you want to actually have extra ones or uh, replace some if you lose them, which is normally not going to happen because you've placed them on the on the table. And you have the 3D printed stand for it. You can just uh, click on it, and you're going to have the information who made it, how you can print it, uh, the license you have to for for it. So it's uh, um, you you can basically just just get it and and print it for yourself. And that's going to be how it looks. So these were red, and uh, I did print the the black one. Uh, but you can basically print that in any of the of the one you want. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for uh, for for today. And uh, well, just before closing that, um, I could remind you that we won an IF Design Award for this uh, the regular bench table. We won a Red Dot Award as well uh, for it. So we're very proud of the uh, of the project uh, as i can remind you the project is a joint venture between overclocking tv hwbot and streetcom so this is all these three person coming together and developing this project for the community it's not just one driving the show and then the other one producing and all it's like like all the concept like everything is agreed between these three partners to uh, make the open bench table uh, project work uh, it is open source, so all the sch schematics and all the different size and things are available online. Uh, you can make your own if you want. I, honestly, if you work or if you study in mechanical engineers and things and you have access to a CNC, try to do it. Try to do it. It's it's a very good um, training for you to, to try out to do it. If you do that, send us videos and pictures. It's always fun to see the uh, people trying out. Uh, if you want to 3D print, you can do it as well. Uh, the license is open source, so it's a, a non-commercial license. So basically, you can do it as much as you want, but you cannot just you just cannot sell it. You can do it for yourself. You can build upon it. You can uh, make sure that the screws will uh, be available, the standoff will be available, the push pin will be will be uh, available if you need some uh, on the openbenchtable.com website. Uh, you can mount. 120 up to 420 millimeters uh, radiators, either for water cooling or all in one water cooling. Um, there is virtually no limitation in terms of uh, motherboard support because it's, because there's, there's basically no case around, so you can go as big as you want as long as it doesn't tip off the motherboard. Um, PSU size, uh, I think we set a limit 
uh, that is like huge and it's actually bigger than any PSUs on the market anyway. Um, what else do we have? What? Uh, well, that's it. And if you want to support the project, you can always go by your unit on the openbenchtable.com website. Uh, this will be actually very uh, helpful for us to uh, to keep on doing this. So that's how we end up doing the BC1 Miney. Um, we don't plan as of now to do another one, but if you want to support the project for more accessories or supporting the project that people make accessories for, um, you're more than welcome to buy your, your open vegetable right there. Um, just before we close on, there was a few, uh, there was a few comments on the live chat. Uh, uh, Willy VT says, glad to, glad to hear you sold out. So we sold out the first batch of the silver. Uh, we sold out the black one. There's just a few units left of the red one. Uh, there's a few, uh, unit, some units left on the silver one as well. Uh, guys, if you want it and it's not being sold in your country, just go get it from the website. That's We ship very fast as well. I guess we ship in less than 72 hours. So basically you order and that's going to be shipped uh, straight to uh, to your address and anywhere in the world. So if you're in India, we can ship in India. If you are in Brazil, we can ship into Brazil. So this is not an issue at all. If you're in South Africa, we can ship to South Africa. If you're in Europe and you don't want to buy it in, 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 in Germany, you can just buy it from the website and we're going to ship it in Europe as well. So there's no restriction uh, on, on that as well. You can travel with it. We did that quite a few times in, uh, in our uh, carry-on luggage in the backpack. And uh, well, that's pretty much it. If I want to basically close down this live, uh, what we were doing today was the uh, live feedback, unmounting slash unboxing slash uh, trying out things on the PC1 Mini that you can see right here. This is a prototype. Uh, this is supposed to go on the market in the next few months, uh, around 129 USD, but that's not MSRP at all. This is just uh, expected price that could be uh, varying for like plus and minus 25%, depending on uh, how we end up on the manufacturing. Uh, the colors are not yet defined. If you want to have specific colors, let us know in the comments. And if you like this video and the project, give it a thumbs up, share that with your friends. And uh, basically, if you say that you don't want to use it, just, well, just give it a thumbs down. But, well, that's just not for you. I, I hope you enjoy watching this hour and a half of videos. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in uh, on Twitch and on Facebook. Uh, thank you very much to Lius that was on the live doing the commentary as well with us. Uh, that was uh, fun to have you around. And for everyone right here on the internet, is. have a great weekend. Have a great night and don't forget until next time.